Howdy y'all, it's Curious Raven on this Friday. They are wrapping up the roofing on my house. I'm excited. They're done and I don't have to worry about it anymore. We have some haunted house stories today and I hope y'all enjoy them. Number one. So a few years back, I was doing online school. So I was home alone for most of the day. And this day I was finished with my schoolwork. So I just was laying on my bed on my phone. And keep in mind, I was home alone. My dad and my stepmom were at work and my stepbrother was at school. And suddenly I started hearing these loud, heavy footsteps coming from the hallway. Also, my room is on the second floor. And it sounded like someone with heavy snow boots was slowly walking back and forth from my room to my dad's room, which was left from mine on the same side. And I just completely froze and paused the video I was watching on my phone. And it just kept walking back and forth, back and forth, for I would say about two minutes. But at the time, it felt like forever. Eventually, it stopped, but I didn't move, as if I was in shock what I just heard. My initial thought was someone was in the house, but I never heard anyone walking up the stairs. By the way, the stairs and the upstairs is covered in wood. But after a minute of me just listening to see if I hear anything else, I got up to see what it was. So I opened my door, swept around the corner, and no one was there. I went to the bathroom window, which overlooks the front yard and driveway, to see if I could see any cars, but there was none. So I just went back to my room and locked the door. Around the same time that happened, I don't remember if it was before or after the incident happened, but one time, also home alone, I was laying on my bed on my side when I heard a voice in my right ear. Now, you could say that it was my brain just being loud, and I would agree with you. But I can't explain the hot breath I felt on my ear when it talked. And it was so close to my ear, it sounded like it was yelling. But I know it was whispering. I can't remember what it said, but I know it was just one word. And that was the only time that ever happened. Fast forward to a few months ago, nothing strange like that happened for a while. So I mainly forgot about it. And one night, I was going to go downstairs to get some water. And for some reason, I also always peek around the corner to see in the living room just to see if anyone is there. Because I get quite paranoid at night. So I walked down the stairs and started to peek into the dark living room, expecting nothing. But then I saw the shadow figure sitting on the couch. The only thing I could make out was the head shape and its shoulders. But past that, it was just a dark mass. I froze and I just stared at it. It didn't even move, just sat there in the dark. After a minute of just staring at it, I audibly said, Nope, and went back upstairs and locked my door. I still peek around the corner at night waiting for it to be back, but it never is. Number two, I don't post often on Reddit. After thinking on it for a long time, I decided to speak here about my encounters. I usually don't tell people about these experiences because I get the, you're just seeing things, or you're just young and we're probably dreaming, something to that extent. I'll also say that I never had a paranormal experience encounter since, and I am very thankful for that. The fear and the confusion that comes from seeing certain things is a lasting effect on the mind and is not something that I've forgotten. I get very emotional speaking about these nights in particular. I appreciate any insight you all may have and thank you for taking your time to read this. My first encounter was when I was very young. I believe I was around five to six when it occurred. My household growing up was a very dark environment. My dad was an abusive alcoholic who would do emotional and physical harm to my two siblings, myself and my mom. We never really had much, but aside from the abuse, we stayed together and loved one another. I'm not sure if it was the energy of that place or something that had happened there before that caused what I saw. My sister had been kicked out by my dad at the time. I was sleeping with her regularly. 
I was young and scared of the dark and generally just didn't want to sleep alone. One night, I woke up suddenly facing the window of my room. It was a small single wide trailer. The rooms weren't big at all. My dad being the way he was had taken my door off because he didn't trust me for one reason or another. I just remember waking up, rolling over and seeing this girl in a white dress in my open doorway. Her hair was black and she had no shoes on. Her hair covered her face and I couldn't see any of her features. I felt a foreboding feeling coming from her and I just knew I shouldn't blink my eyes. I was afraid she would rush up and be in my face when I opened them, so I stared as long as I could. As I did, I just felt this pulling sensation as if she wanted me to come to her. I knew that this wasn't a good idea, and to be honest, I was so scared that I was basically a statue. I stared as long as I could and eventually had to blink, but when I did, she was gone. I'm not sure of what would have happened had I went to her, but I'm glad I didn't. Keep in mind that during this time, I was too scared to watch horror movies or anything like that, so images like that was not normal to me. I'd never seen her before and definitely not after. My second and last encounter came about one to two years after that. I had just come home from a Valentine's dance and was getting ready for bed. I tended to sleep near my parents' room if I could on the couch because it felt safer. I had a great night with no negativity at all, which is what I can explain which is what I can't explain about the situation even more. While trying to sleep, I started to hear a smacking noise. Kinda like what people do who eat with their mouth open. I was very confused, so I looked down the side of the couch at the floor and saw what looked like a head. I stared at it for a bit because it was making the noise. Eventually, it slowly started looking up at me, and I could see that it had the features of an old man. It was smacking its mouth, and it looked like a lot of blood was coming out. I got so scared, and I jumped up, stopped on the head. I don't remember feeling anything solid other than the floor when I did so. I ran into my parents' room. I crawled in the bed beside my mom and tried to sleep. I wanted to check my surroundings because I was still feeling unsafe. I saw the head everywhere now, like it had duplicated itself. It was all over the sheets and on the floor beside the bed. All of them were staring at me and smacking their lips. All I could do is put my head under the covers and pray. Eventually, I fell asleep. I'm not sure if it was a toxic environment I grew up in or what that caused these to happen. I've never forgotten these experiences and I have never even wrote this long of a post on Reddit, period. I just felt like I needed to get it off my chest and see what other people and see what other believers might think. Thank you. Number three. Hi, everyone. My roommate and I think we have ghosts in our apartment, but we're not sure. Sorry if there's broken English, it's not my first language. So everything that happens, happens when each of us are alone. We haven't experienced anything like this when we are both together. We are believers, but still sometimes skeptics, sometimes skeptics. First thing that happened to me, I was sitting in the kitchen by my roommate's bedroom door and she wasn't home because she went home to her family for the weekend. Sitting in the kitchen, I heard something like a chair move behind her door. I just stopped everything. I was listening and tried to hear it again, but nothing. Mind you, this was just the day after we moved in. I like to think that was just our neighbors upstairs, but still not sure. The second thing that happened was to her. She was laying in her bed and heard a scream right next to her head. After that, she stopped everything she was doing and listened. So she heard something like maybe I was looking through my stuff in my bedroom. But I was not in the apartment. After moving stuff in my bedroom, she heard loud banging on the wall between our rooms like someone just hit the wall really hard from my room. The last thing and the most scary thing happened to her maybe about two weeks ago. She came from her singing class. She sings opera and sat in the kitchen. 
She was singing something that she sang in her class, and right after she stopped, she heard someone like mimicking her voice. It sounded just like her, but didn't recognize the melody. She was intrigued and thought that someone is singing in the hallway, so she went to the door and she was going towards the voice, but it was moving away from her. And right when she stepped into the hallway, the voice stopped. She came to the door and kept listening for an elevator or door to close, but she didn't hear anything, and she found it very weird. We knew that before this apartment was released to us lived an old couple. The man died, don't know when, where or how, and the old lady is in her 90s in a retirement home. Thank you everyone in advance if you read this story, and if you can comment your opinion, it would be really helpful. It would be really helpful. Number four, I have a 19-month-old who the last few nights have been coughing in her sleep. She goes to daycare. She always has a cold. Around 12.30 a.m., she woke up. I suctioned her, and she laid with me for a bit until she fell back asleep. I put her back in her crib and went to bed. Around 1.45 a.m., I randomly woke up and felt a small movement in the bed. When she is in my bed, she is able to slide off the side and get down. I thought that was what I was feeling. However, this means she would have had to crawl over my husband who was asleep and slide down, which would have woken him up. This is a loud walker, and I did hear a few steps to the door, and it looked like a small figure was trying to open the door, which I leave open a crack. She is able to pull the door open. As I'm looking, the door doesn't move. It just stays open a very small amount. I'm thinking maybe she woke up and he got her. But when I asked her where she is going, there's no sound. And I can't really see a figure anymore. I get up and go into her room because I'm really freaked out now. She's asleep in her crib, not doing anything. She cannot get out of it by herself. So I go back to bed, but it takes me a while to fall asleep. Around 4 a.m., I feel movement in the bed again, and she's in the bed with us. I'm really weirded out, so I check the camera, and I can see when I go in and check on her, and then I can see he goes in and gets her at 3.40 a.m., but none of this explains what happens earlier. Needless to say, I'm writing this because I am slightly freaked out, and I can't go back to sleep. Has this happened to anyone else? Number five, when my children were six and eight years old, my husband and I had the opportunity to purchase his grandfather's house from the estate. It was a beautiful 1970s rambler, an exclusive neighborhood. His grandparents had a complicated marriage. His grandmother, I will call it Rita, was a true grand lady of education and class. Hal was well liked in his community, but his family members had hard feelings about the way he treated Rita and the kids. The grandparents kept separate bedrooms. Rita had a room on the sunny side of the house. Rita passed away peacefully in the home. Hal died during surgery a year or so later. As we were doing some remodeling updating before we moved in, I could smell Rita's trademark lilac scent at the end of the hall by her room. I always felt a calming, peaceful presence in the sunlight in that room. It felt like her safe space. Eventually, the smell and presence went away. This house didn't have a pantry on the main level, but had a large pantry off the laundry room in the basement. This wasn't a traditional basement. The house was built on a slope, so the back half of the house had full sunlight. It's not a scary dark place. Yet, when I would ask the kids to go downstairs to get a can of diced tomatoes or something, they always hesitated. My daughter definitely told me she was afraid. This continued for a better part of 10 years. They both complained about the pantry, feeling sinister. I would sometimes wake up in the master bedroom feeling like I was being watched. In the doorway was a shadow that nearly filled it. It was a tall, slim man in a fedora. Just the outline. This happened many times. In their teen years, the kids wanted more space and privacy. 
then eventually moved to bedrooms downstairs. I thought that was that. My husband and I divorced, and he moved across the country, and I downsized. Years later, I had my adult children in the backyard for an adult beverage one evening. We were talking about how none of us believed in ghosts. But there were things we could not explain. I was talking about the 1917 bungalow I live in now, and how certain places smell like ghosts because the home is in an old part of town. When I first moved in, I sensed almost a ghost highway, like spirits were everywhere. When I mentioned the man with a fedora hat from their childhood home, their eyes got big. Both kids had experienced the man in the fedora in exactly the same way, waking up feeling watched to see a tall, slim shadow in the doorway with a fedora hat. We still do not know how to reconcile that with our skepticism. All right, that's the end of the stories today. I didn't do seven since some of the stories were longer than normal, so I only did five. I hope you'll have a good weekend. I should see y'all tomorrow for our creepy pasta Saturday. I love y'all so much. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Remember, it's scary out there. Please like and subscribe. Cross.